here's the page that we're going to be working with for our last section here. As you can see, we have multiple vacations. And when we click show comments, we want to show the comments for that vacation. Specifically, we want them to fade in. So how might we do that? Here's our DOM, and the first thing we want to do is to make sure that the comments UL is hidden when we load the page. So we make it display none inside of our CSS. Then we want to add behavior so that when we click this link, show comments, that it shows the proper comments underneath that link. Inside of our application.js, we have our document ready. Inside that, we're going to fetch the vacation class, listen for a click event, on the link, which has the expand class on it, and then run our event handler. There's two things we need to do inside of our event handler. First, we need to find the comments UL, which is below our link, and then we need to show it, or in this case, fade it in. To find the appropriate comments list, we need to do some traversal like we did on previous sections. So the link that was clicked, we're going to start with that, or in this case, this because it was what was clicked um, and then call closest to search up through its ancestors to find the vacation class and then call find to search down through the dom to find the appropriate comments list so we found the comments list now we just need to fade it in and there's a couple different fade methods that we can use we have fade in fade out and fade toggle which will toggle between the two in this case we want to use fade toggle so that when we click on the link, it'll either fade them in or fade them out. So let's see this in action. As you can see, we can click on one of the links and then it fades in the comments. Then we can click on it again and it will fade out the comments. However, if we click on a link near the bottom of the page, oh, did you see that? The page jumped back up to the top of the page. That's kind of annoying. And uh, how do we fix that? In order to understand how we fix that, we need to grasp what's happening when an event occurs inside of the DOM. So here's our link, and when an event occurs, we get this little event bubble. We'll call it a bubble. And it's going to start right there on our link, and then it's going to go up to each parent node to let it know, hey, a click event happened. Eventually, it's going to get to the top, and then, well, because we have an href here with a hash, it's going to follow that link when it gets up to the browser, which is going to do the default behavior, which is pop it back up to the top of the page. So we need to figure out a way from preventing that default browser behavior. The first step down the road to fixing this is to add the event parameter inside of our event handler, as you see here. We're going to need that in a minute. One way we can try to fix this is by using stop propagation. What that's going to do is when the event happens and it tries to bubble up, it's not going to. It's not going to bubble up to other ancestors. However, stop propagation does not prevent the default behavior from the browser, and we're still going to pop up to the top of the page. So this is not our solution. Instead, we're going to call event.preventDefault to prevent the default behavior of the browser. In this case, when the event happens, it's going to bubble up, and when it reaches our browser, it's not going to follow the default behavior, which is popping up to the top of the page because our href was a hash. So now, when we go back to our web page, we can see that we can fade in comments and fade out comments, and we're no longer popping up to the top of the web page. So now, it's time for you to get into the challenges, and I'll see you in level five.